video, we are going to be working on multiplying mixed numbers with generic rectangles. Now, the first thing we're going to do is start by doing an example of a generic rectangle. So, in my example, we have 24 times 33, and I already have the generic rectangle set up for you. And how we set this up is we are actually doing... We're breaking apart the 24 and the 33 into tens and ones. So the 24 becomes 20 and 4, 20 plus 4 is 24, and 33 becomes 30 and 3, 30 plus 3 is 33. So that's the setup. And then we start, and we're actually finding areas. We're finding four areas, and we're going to add it together. So we start with 30 times 20, and I actually like to do 3 times 2, and I get 6. And then I add however many zeros I have, and that would be 2, so my answer is 600. And I'm going to put that there. Then I will go down to this one. I have 30, because that is that length, times 4. 3 times 4 is 12, and I have 1 zero. And over here we have 20 times 3. 3 times 2 is 6. And I'm going to add one zero. And at the bottom, I have three times four, and I get 12. So then, in order to find the total answer, I need to add up all the areas. So I need to do 600. And I have to be very careful when I line them up, plus 120 to make sure I'm lining up place values correctly, 60 and 12. So I'm adding. So 0, 0, 0 plus 2 would be 2. 0 plus 2 is 2, plus 6 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And then 6 and 1 is 7. So my final answer is 792. So there is example 1. Then we're going to actually go on to do one with mixed numbers. And since we know how to multiply fractions, this is going to be very simple, um, especially using our generic rectangle. So again, we have 4 and 2 fifths and 2 and a fourth. That is our problem. I already have it set up. I have the 4. I'm breaking it up into whole numbers and fractions. So 4 and then 2 fifths and 2 and the 1 fourth. If you add those sides together, you get these numbers up here. So we're going to start small. 4 times 2 is 8. Then we have something a little bit trickier. So now we have 4 times 1 fourth. Now I'm actually going to show you these calculations. So we have 4 times 1 fourth. Now something that might be nice to remember is that 4 is really the same as 4 over 1. 4 holes. So what I have is 4 over 1 times 1 over 4, and I'm actually just doing 4 times 1 to get 4, okay, multiplying my numerators and then my denominators. 1 times 4 is 4 again. So 4 over 4 is actually just 1. So I could put it in there either way. I'm going to put it in there as a 1. But that is where that came from. Then... And I'll change to a different color. I'm going to do 2 fifths times 2. And I'm going to, again, remember that 2 holes can be written as 2 over 1. So it's going to be 2 fifths, or 2 over 1 times 2 fifths. And that is equal to 4 fifths. So that's going to go here. And then our last one, one fourth times two fifths. Again, multiplying our numerators, one times two is two. Multiplying the denominators, four times five is 20. I get two over 20, and I can simplify that. I know two goes into both, so I have one tenth.
And what I need to do is add all of these numbers together. So I have, I'll do it over here, 8 plus 1, and I get 9. And I know that I need to add my fractions together. So it's going to be easiest if I do 4 fifths, add those separately, plus 1 tenth. Now when adding, I need a common denominator. So I need to change this fraction. And I can easily do that. 5 times 2 is 10. So I'm going to use my giant one. And inside my giant one, I'm going to get 2 because I'm trying to get 2, 10. 4 times 2 is 8. So I'm going to change this up here. And I'm going to get 8 over 10 plus 1 over 10 is 9 over 10. So then I need to add that number and that number together and I get 9 and 9 tenths. And I know this is a lot of steps, but these are all steps that you know. So it's just reviewing a whole bunch of different things that we've been working on this year. So we will do another example. Example number two, we have five and three eighths times one and one half. And again, I've already set up the problem. We have five and three eighths. We have one and one half. And we'll start here. Five times one is Pretty simple, five, one times three eighths. This is really nice because we don't even have to do any calculations. One times three eighths, any time, anything times one is itself. So this answer is gonna be three eighths. Okay, so then we have five times one half. Five holes is five over one times one half. Again, not too bad. We have 5 over 2. Or if you want to use decimals for this one, 2.5. And then we have 3 eighths times one half, and I'll do this over here, three over eight times one half. Multiplying my numerators, I get three. Multiplying my denominators, I'm gonna get 16. So I have three sixteenths. All right, and now I need to add all of these numbers together. And I ha I'm going to add up all my fractions first. So these three. I have 5 over 2 plus, and I'm going to make myself a little more room. I have 5 over 2 plus 3 over 16 plus 3 over 8. Now this is fantastic because we have um, 2, 16, and 8 as our denominators. Well, 2 times 8 is 16, so I know that all these numbers work really nicely together. So 5 over 2, my giant 1 is going to have an 8. And 5 times 8 is 40. And then 16. 
and I'm going to change this one as well. 3 over 8 inside my giant 1. There's a 2. 3 times 2 is 6 over 16. So I'm going to rewrite this problem so that I have all common denominators. I have 40 over 16 plus 3 over 16 plus 6 over 16. 40 plus 3 is 43 plus 6 is 49. Okay, so I have 49 sixteenths is the fractions all added together, so we have as well that 5, but first I want to figure out um, how many times 16 goes into 49, and that is 3 whole times, and 3 times 16 is equal to 48. And we have 49, so there's going to be one left over. So this is really 3 and 1 16th. And then we have to remember to add 5 to get our final answer. So we have 3 and 1 16th plus 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. And then we have 1 16th as our final answer. So again, a lot of steps, but all things that you know how to do. Feel free to use the multiplication chart to help you with some of the multiplication and turning your improper fractions into mixed numbers. And that should do it. If you have any questions, make sure to come with those into class tomorrow.